the cooperation and interaction of the European Council and the Council. Summit interview with Jim Kloos, Deputy Director General in the General Secretariat of the Council. In this video, Jim Kloos, Deputy Director General in the General Secretariat of the Council, gives insights into the cooperation and interactions of the European Council and the Council of the European Union. He inter alia explains how the European Council enables the work of the Council and how the Council, for example, uses the European Council to get a mandate to negotiate with the European Parliament. What role does the European Council play from the perspective of the Council? Well, first of all, I think they are two different animals, although now, after the Lisbon Treaty, the European Council has also become an institution. As you know, the European Council was not originally foreseen. Uh, by the treaties. Uh, the only institutions which existed at the time were the Council of Ministers, the Commission uh, and the Assembly of the European Parliament and of course the Court of Justice. The uh, European Council grew uh, out of the need in the 60s and 70s which the heads of state and government felt that they also had to say something about Europe because Europe was becoming so important, the community as it was called. Now. The European Council's role is different in the sense that the European Council is there to set the political guidelines and orientations within the Union. Uh, the Council is a community institution which has a direct legislative role, together with the Parliament now. Uh, the Commission makes proposals and then the Council and the Parliament uh, have to work together in what is called a co-decision procedure to agree legislation. Now, the European Council gives guidelines, but of course, from time to time, it also tells the Council what to do. For instance, if within the Council they cannot agree on the position, the European Council says, maybe you should try it that way or that way, and then the Council goes back. So, the Council, the European Council helps the Council to get its mandate to negotiate with the Parliament. Mm -hmm. And then this goes in a similar direction. How does the cooperation between the European Council and the Council work? And you could edit it. Yes, now, uh, historically speaking, I mean, before the uh, Lisbon Treaty, uh, the President of the European Council was also uh, held, the Presidency of the European Council was held by the Rotating Presidency. So you had, of course, a chain of command from the Prime Minister of the country holding the Presidency down to the Ministers chairing the Council, to the uh, ambassador chair in Korea, uh, the, the, the permanent representative's body in Brussels. Now, since 2009, we have a separate president of the European Council, first from Rompuy, now Tusk, who does this on a full-time basis. That, of course, means that you have to work to make sure that the link between the European Council and the Council functions, because the Council prepares the European Council, and the Council has to implement, together with, of course, the Commission and the Parliament, the uh, guidelines set down by the European Council. So it is extremely important, and that is why there is a constant interlink. For instance, President Tusk very regularly sees the Prime Minister of the Rotating Presidency, now Prime Minister uh, Muscat from Malta. Uh, at the administrative level, the Council Secretariat, where I work, we are the Council Secretariat, I mean, historically speaking, but we are also the Secretariat of the European Council, and we are, in a way, the administration of the European Council President. So we obviously work very much uh, to keep synergies between the two, while respecting the respective roles. Mm -hmm. And from this perspective, would you say that the European Council rather hinders or enables the work of the Council? Well, it certainly enables it more than it did. I hope it doesn't hinder it. Uh, on the contrary, I think uh, because of the importance of the heads of state and government within our respective countries, uh, it is very important if you want to buy in in the member countries, if you want the national parliaments to follow, if you want the member countries to actually deliver. There are many issues where you need the heads of state and government because you have horizontal issues, you have issues which are extremely sensitive in the countries. So it really helps to have the heads of state government uh, working together. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
saying this is what we want. For instance, if you have European Council conclusions, they very often say we expect the Council to find a Council position by the end of the year so that the negotiations with Parliament can start. So it's very much uh, a cross-fertilisation process. Uh, and uh, there are certain areas which are so difficult, like for instance multi-annual financial framework negotiations, where you talk about a lot of money, you talk about the whole organisation. Actually, the European Council tells the Council quite precisely what it wants to be done. Uh, in other areas, it's a more general recommendations. But uh, let me conclude this by saying that without the European Council being there, uh, I think we would not at all have gotten to the stage we are in now in terms of European integration. And so my answer there is very unequivocally that the European Council does not hinder the Council, it enables the Council and it helps the Council find solutions. Okay, very interesting. Um, and maybe a last um, short question. Could you make a little prediction or do you can you already see th something about the role of the European Council in the um, Brexit negotiations? I cannot tell you much about this because the negotiations have not started as long as the British have not formally uh, notified there is no negotiation. What I can tell you is what the treaty says. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is a procedure for a country leaving the European Union. It's Article 50 of the Treaty of the European Union. The role of the European Council there very clearly is very clear. Once the British will have notified, the European Council will set guidelines for how this process should be run. On this basis, the Commission will make recommendations to the Council and then the negotiations will start. The Council will designate the negotiation, which will be the Commission largely. The European Council will continue to play an important role by providing overall guidance, maybe by adjusting its guidelines and all of that. So the European Council plays, again, a very important framing role. The actual detailed negotiations will happen at a different level.